When we heed a certain call When the world must come together as one My main message to our young people is for them to come together to fight human trafficking, rape and violence against women. Let us put our hands together because this is the weapon against the future of young people. We can't keep quiet. We can't go on Pretending day by day That someone Somewhere will soon make a change We are a part of the march is on and we are not stopping. The march to rectify all the vices that have built up over time and which make life really uncomfortable for even people who are not affected. Vices like rape, vices like human trafficking. I may not know anybody who has been trafficked, but if my neighbor is, or if another citizen is, or another human being is, it should bother me. I should make it my business. That is what makes one a true citizen of the world. Today we are here at a very significant event in Abuja, Nigeria, which is aimed at grooming people. It is actually the graduation ceremony of people who have been groomed to become activists, people who say no to human trafficking, people who do something about human trafficking to curb it and stop it. That is why we are here and that is why I have this red on because it is not a joke. We are red hot and ready to make sure that this stops in society. Let's go in and see how this goes. We are the world. We are Trafficking is not just the externalization of our human assets. It is also the estrangement of human assets from one part of the country to the other in a manner that makes it impossible for the equal development of those human assets. We take a child from what is supposed to be a poor environment to go and be oppressed and be, uh, instead of be looked after in another family. There is something called the UBET Act, and the UBET Act requires, the Universal, the Universal Basic Education Act, it requires that every person, every child in Nigeria should, be entitled, should have access to basic education, defined as six years of primary education and up to three years of post-primary education. A lot of these kids we take out of the villages don't ever get that. And they are subjected to indignities nobody should be subjected to. And so when we also speak about trafficking, let's remember those children. Those children of parents, often who may be dead. Children of the latest, of course, in trafficking is IDPs from the Northeast. You owe it to your next level to say this is wrong, this is criminal, this is not, this is not supposed to be. I asked us all those who support anti trafficking and prostitution, and I said, if it's your daughter. We did an application in 2011 from uh, Mali. We brought back 14, uh, 101 Nigerian girls. One of them had, was taken to Mali when she was starting. She had been in Mali for three years. That's she, so, so we brought her back when she was 16. Every day she sleep with 40 men a day. They were paying 400, 500 suffer. An equivalent of 500 suffer in Nigeria is 150 naira. So she makes 150 naira for sleeping with that times 40 men a day. I tell you right now, I'm standing with a man who doesn't stop. A man who has dedicated his life, his career, his life entirely to fighting causes, especially of human traffic, especially of human trafficking, rape and the vices which really trouble us. So you are training other people to do what you're doing, eh? Exactly. Okay, tell us clearly what, what this um, initiative is about today. Okay, this initiative, Anti-Human Trafficking Advocacy Training, is actually a platform to a raise advocate that will be in the forefront of combating human trafficking because in the course of our awareness in communities we realize that there are more work to do to end human trafficking but few people are valuable to do it you know this has happened today we have trainees that are passing out today do you do, do this event actually go a long way in affecting this problem society like um, human trafficking you have to believe it does look you, you can't change the country by sitting in your portion of the world or in your little room and uh, you know every good cause desires and it requires and deserves disciples and apostles and it's 
from places like this you get them, you know, equip people with skills, with passion, with inspiration, and unleash them on the world of change. And that. Just in a nutshell, as to how we can subdue this, this very powerful yet um, conquerable vice. Uh, you know, there are so many things we can do, uh, but the first thing is, uh, as much as we address the pull factors, the things that attract people to Europe, we also have to ad address the push factors, the things that make people leave Nigeria to want to go to Europe or to get trafficked or to get involved in going to India to sell their body organs for a, you know, a mess of pottage. And one of those things is building a country that works, a country of values, a country that values its people. And that comes from getting the right leadership, getting basic social goods available to people, hospitals, education, basic access to financial services, promoting young people and their entrepreneurs entrepreneurship and innovation. So I'm going back to the school to educate everybody, both the school principal, the teachers, the students, the parents, to let them know what trafficking is, woman trafficking is, even to the extent of organ trafficking. So people should be aware. And even I would like to enlighten the people in my community, let them know reason why they should say no to woman trafficking. There comes a time when we heed a certain call, when the world must come together as one, there are people.